Libya, photo investigation. I present to you the armor-piercing material that demonstrates the real source of revolution in Libya. You will see that the rebels have new foreign weapons which were not adopted by the Libyan military forces. Foreign instructors, foreign weapons, foreign money, foreign scenario, but native blood. When the flow of pictures from Libya started, the evidence staged character of the pictures led one to want to take a deeper look at the situation. Note, all the pictures shown were taken by Western journalists, highlighting the situation from the rebel standpoint only. And from the very first frames of film it hit me, the weapons and equipment of those rebels simply could not have been so massive in number and so brand new. Unless the weapons somehow found their way there on time from the outside. Please look for yourself, I could be wrong, but do you think this adds up? This is the first photo that really caught my attention. You can see in this ordinary demonstrator's hands, the light automatic rifle FNFAL, absolutely brand new, right out of the box. The rifle was produced by the Belgian armaments manufacturer FN. During the Cold War, it was adopted by many North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries, with the notable exception of the United States. Is one of the most widely used rifles in history, having been used by over 90 countries. The light automatic rifle was predominantly chambered for the 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO round, and because of its prevalence and widespread use amongst the armed forces of many NATO countries during the Cold War, it was nicknamed the right hand of the free world. This guy has another brand new FN, FAL. And as does this guy as well. In the next photo you can see a mob scene and a guy wearing a white headscarf. He also has an FN, FAL. Now how could all these people get such a weapon in such good condition? The rifle is not and has never been adopted by the Libyan army. Usually Libyan soldiers run around with old Kalashnikovs, like this one. This means that the rebels could not get all of those FN, FAL rifles from military storage points. And they certainly couldn't buy them in a store. So the question is, where did they get them from? And even more importantly, how could they get the enormous amounts of ammo needed for the rifles when Gaddafi didn't have them? Let's also take a look at the machine guns. Well, the ancient DSHK Soviet heavy anti-aircraft machine gun, firing 12.7 by 108mm rounds, is actually quite normal for paramilitary nomads. But where did this thing come from? Or this. As you can see, these are U.S. machine guns chambered for NATO rounds. And again, they're absolutely brand new, right out of the box. Gaddafi couldn't have a weapon like this because of 40 years of embargo. And also, he really wouldn't need it because the rounds for it are very expensive and getting them delivered is a big problem. It'd be much cheaper and much easier to buy Chinese machine guns chambered for Soviet rounds. Oh, well, there we go. That's a Chinese heavy machine gun. But this picture is interesting not because of the machine gun itself, but because of the fact that the machine gun is again brand new, right from the plant, as well as the instructors who are teaching the Libyan father how to use the weapon. And now can you see what this is hinting at? Normally machine guns don't come with their own instructors to teach you how to use them. But then again, machine guns alone don't win a revolution. You need something with some real firepower. And well, here's something. This is an MP-ADS, Man Portable Air Defense System. Each one of these costs big money on the black market and requires a qualified professional to maintain them. And so that's why we can see an instructor here. 
The guy teaching the Libyans to manage this high-tech device sure doesn't look like one of them, does he? And here we can see a Joker running around with a U.S. Army pistol and a NATO Kevlar combat helmet. Now how could he get all this? From Gaddafi's military storage? Come on. But most of all, I like this picture. And what do we have here? Two natives holding a crate of 106 mm rounds for the recoilless M40 rifle. The native Bin Laden among them points to where to carry the crate. The M40 recoilless rifle is a lightweight, portable, crew-served, 105mm weapon intended primarily as an anti-tank weapon made in the United States. Okay, this crate is American and brand new. I think you can realize that by now. Uh, for example, if you look at the perfect condition of the crate, straps, come on, you can't tell me that this came from Gaddafi's ancient storages. Excuse me, but if you still think this, I doubt the adequacy of your perception of reality, sir. Let me remind you, Libya had a 40-year embargo, so there's no way that Libya could have bought the weapons or the rounds from the US or the UK. It's purely fiction. And by the way, here you can see the recoilless M40 itself. As you can see here, the rifle and the Toyota mini truck don't really give you the impression of a scrappy rebel force fighting for freedom. Wow, and among the rebels we can surprisingly see some African mercenaries that were allegedly hired by Gaddafi to fire on the people. So finally, what is the general conclusion that you can make from our brief photo investigation? Well, we can see a lot of brand new NATO weapons, foreign instructors, American ammo, new uniforms and equipment, and a uh, suspiciously large amount of non-Libyan mugs. Do you know what this looks like? You're absolutely right. It definitely looks like a well-organized coup from abroad. The foreign managers have brought the people, provided the brand new weapons, instructors and equipment, all to the young people in Libya. Naive young people who work for free drugs, dope, and just the rush of being a revolutionary. Well, maybe you still don't believe me. You've taken a look at all the photos, and they're still sit down. Well, let me show you one last photo. This is what a real desert fighter looks like. No clean NATO weapons, no shining brand new American ammo from unopened boxes, and no Kevlar vests from Europe. Just some rags, an old gun, an axe, and the will to fight. That's what you see there, and that's what everyone fighting should look like. So what's your opinion now? Do you really think all those people in the previous photos are real common demonstrators? What do you think? The original post you can find here, in Russian, Share information with friends. For more information visit website nstorikov.ru